بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Uh, I feel honored and uh, blessed to be part of this project. And I, in I will tell you why later. But before that, I would like to uh, thank Prof. Uh, for inviting me to facilitate this, uh, and the center is for inviting me to facilitate this workshop. And also, I thank you all for being here. I'm very humble. There are many of my lectures. Prof. Hisham, he taught me in my first system. And also, Prof. Wali is my lecturer, my mentor. Prof. Kamal, of course, is my mentor. They are all, you know, I'm very humble, you know. So, so, but before we start the workshop, since you know it is early morning, maybe we feel sleepy a little bit. Can I ask you a little bit to stand up to do some kind of exercise? Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just move your hand up and down, and you do some kind of exercise. Yeah, feel casual. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Uh, before uh, I start the workshop, uh, I'm very sorry to to make some rules. Even though th those rules maybe will go against the basic principle of future studies, uh, because you know in future studies uh, you need to be casual. There is no rule. But in the context of the, our vision uh, and the workshop, uh, I made some rules. This is for the benefit so that we can come up with a very good uh, result by the end of the day. The purpose of today's workshop is to come up with the, at least with the skeleton and the structure of the study, inshallah. Uh, so those rules, let me just, one by one, I go through it. This is the first rule. Already Prof. Kamal, of course, mentioned this one. Uh, just to remind you to make a near, just like the same way we make a near for Salah, we are here for Him. Allah is watching us, and I'm pretty sure there is angels among us here. So we are here for Him. Anything we do, inshallah, will be recorded, and the moment we go back to Him, we will be rewarded for that. And then for that reason, of course, throughout the workshop, each cluster, please observe all the ayah of the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet because starting from the Surah Al-Fatiha until the Surah Nas Allah is talking about the future even in Surah Al-Fatiha if you look at it and contemplate on it there is the elements of Al-Akhirah Malik Yawm al-Din Yawm al-Din is the, of course is Akhirah and the, is the, the concept of future there are some verses, of course, I will just go through it, you just, I uh, don't have to, you know, I don't explain, you know, uh, just, you see, in this verse, Allah says, When we know that we are on the earth, 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 we are on the earth. This is in the context of, in Surah Qasas, in the, uh, when the Prophet, uh, when Allah revealed to the mother of Prophet Musa to, uh, put him in the river so that you know and then Allah mentioned this one and then وَقَالُوا مَا هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهَرِ the concept of dahar, the time is very important uh, and then هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا before 100 years we were nothing after 100 years we will be nothing Nothing remain, only our good deeds. And then, Wal Asr, Inna al Insana Lafi Khusr, is really a very waking up, waking up call, you know. Uh, Wa tukla alayhim ayatuna bayinati ma kana hujjatahum illa an khalu tu bi abayina in kutum sadiqin. This is also the elements of future, is that. Uh, ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نرأها 
in the tariq ala Allah yasira. Everything is very easy on Allah. Kun fayakun. And then there is a hadith of the Prophet. And the scholar says that the person, uh, I mean, uh, this is not has to be the person, we should not take it literally, can be an organization. So inshallah, I believe that we are this group. In the And now is the right time. We will be inshallah that group to bring the change. All right. Uh, and then, in awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون لهم البشرى في الحياة الدنيا. It's not only آخرة في الحياة الدنيا. We will be harvesting. We will be getting the reward. إن شاء الله. Okay. The second group. In order for this to work, after of course those verses. Of course, there are many verses you can bring it uh, during the workshop. Each cluster, please, it's true that we have many clusters. Let's say, for example, we have Islamic entertainment, we have technology, we have Islamic unity. Please look at it from a broader perspective. So we have something called STEEP. Uh, we should follow, this is stand for uh, society, technology, environment, economic, and politics. This is all are very important to look at it. So we should not be uh, working in silo. We should take into consideration, so it is a kind of multidisciplinary study for each cluster. So when you work, when you work on, let's say, Islamic entertainment, you have to look at the politics, how politics work, and how the, what is the environment, what is the society, how the society, what, is the, what are the trends? All these things, you have to be aware of it. This is the, uh, the third role. Okay. Uh, the fourth, this is uh, by David Price. David Price, he, he came up with some of these uh, rules. He said that this is for, of course, uh, in the context of universities. He said that the university, in order to survive, there must be this core principle. And of course, in any vision, any things that we have in this world nowadays, we have to apply these four principles. Share. Share the idea. Don't keep it. And then be open. Be open-minded. Of course, open-minded, you know. Uh, with the principle, not the, at the expense of the principle that you have. Be open-minded for to get other people's view. And then all these things should be free. Free and also trust each other. These four principles are very important for us to survive. And then as long as you are here, you are the right person. Don't wait for other people to Oh, I cannot say this one because that person is not here, my boss is not here. As long as you are here, you are the right person. Whoever come is the right people. And then be casual. Please, uh, there is no formality here, there is no position here. Don't look at, okay, I'm sorry, uh, there are many deputy directors here, I'm very sorry. So please, there is no position here, don't be afraid of the Deputy rectors and rectors uh, and the deans, uh, try to express your idea in order for the workshop to work, inshallah. Uh, and then uh, avoid, avoid group think. You know, when, when your group member, because maybe uh, your boss is the heading the cluster, uh, he says something or the group says something and then you agree, no. Sometimes you show your disagreement. If you don't agree, you express. And then write down disagreement. Uh, there are some rules. This is by Alex Osborne for brainstorming. Uh, uh, defer the judgment. Don't judge the people when they express the idea. 
And then sometimes, any idea? Okay, uh, express any idea, however it is. You know, just uh, uh, don't limit yourself. And uh, even it is uh, ridiculous or it is provocative, try to express. And then other group member, please don't judge, okay? Later we will ask him why he say so, okay? And then uh, uh, think user-centric. This is very important. So anything we do, we try to be we are here to serve the humanity, to serve the people. So this is the uh, ultimate aim. So uh, this, is, uh, this is I got from Alex Osborne when you, he talks about how we can have a effective brainstorming. And then, uh, okay. Uh, of course, there are other rules, please. Uh, if you feel boring or if you want to inter uh, interrupt me or please do so. If you want to ask me a questions, please do so because this is a very casual workshop. Inshallah, by the end of the day, we will come up with something. That's the, the, that's the, the whole aim of the workshop. Uh, so this is the outline of my presentation. I will be explaining to you what is this future studies is and what is not, okay? because there are a lot of misconceptions about these future studies. So I will try to explain these two, and then I will give you, uh, of course there are thousands of literatures, I will just uh, bring some literature, just uh, I, I snapped the photos of the book, I have the books, if you want to uh, uh, come to my office, I can uh, lend it to you, uh, and then after that I will talk about some foundational concepts. These foundational concepts, uh, most of the futurists talked about, but uh, Suhail Inayatullah have, uh, what you call, put it in a for, uh, proper format. And then we have six pillars of future studies, methodologies, then conclusions. So, uh, but remember that, these future studies, there are two parts. There are ideological part, there are methodological part. We have, we have nothing to do with this ideological part. Because when you look at them, most of them is, they talks about you know, evolutionary kind of theories. It is based on a Darwinist approach, you know. But in terms of the tool and methodology, this is what, uh, inshallah, we bring some of those tools. I believe that it can help us to come up with this, uh, inshallah, vision. We have already the vision, we have the ideological framework, as explained by Prof, and then later, based on that, uh, how we can use those tools to, for our study. Okay, okay uh, future studies, the problem is, uh, uh, sometimes I meet people, they say that, okay, what is going to happen next week? Because I, I, they say you are the, our future is, what is going to happen? And if you look at the literature on the future studies, most of them, they refute this idea. It is not about prediction. It is not about prediction. It is not about if anyone says that for certainty, oh, is, this is what is going to happen next week or next two weeks, hear what to do, run from that person as quickly as possible. Okay, uh, and then, but given to the unpredictability of the future does not mean that we cannot forecast. We should be able, based on the issues, trends and problem, we can forecast something, we can know uh, based on the current trends. At the personal level, of course, we can forecast something in our life. That's why, you know, we have the education, we are, when, we edu when we educate our kids, we, when we send them to the kidney garden, and when uh, we plan for our retirement, for example, these are something, you know, we can forecast based on our personal experience. I will come back, inshallah, to this one, how to forecast later. 
And then prefer future should be envisioned. That's what we are doing now. We already have the preferred future, passionate line. So we have this one already. So, uh, so it is not about prediction, but how we can get there. That's the most important thing. And so based on that, it is not a BOMO. It is not the, you know, Raja BOMO, you know. Or, uh, going, uh, so please don't come to me, hey, where is the MH370? <laughs> okay. And future can be created. Prefer future can be created. For example, I tell you, I always make this joke. Uh, my plan is, my plan is in 2025 to transplant my hair. So in 2025, you can see me with full hair. This is my plan. But now there is already this technology they can transplant for you. You know, within two, three weeks, you can see you with my... So the question is, why should I delay until 2025? My sister is telling me, I will sponsor you, sponsor your transplantation. You go and do it. But I said, I don't have time for that. You know, you have to, you know, two, three months, you have to isolate yourself, stay somewhere, and then... Uh, so, but, so th this is the preferred future, for example, in my physical body. I can do it. I can create it. This is in my hand, okay? Uh, this is by this guy, he, uh, Marshall McLuhan. He said that we are our, we shape our tools and thereafter our tools shape us. It's true. So the tools we created and what tools we are creating, and then later, of course, remember, that tool shape us. Uh, future studies is the systematic study of possible, probable, and preferable future. In the 1960s, 1950, uh, nine, it was 1930s when uh, Frederick Pola, Frederick Pola, he was a Dutch scholar, he published a book the image of the future. In that book, of course, he talks about the image of the future of Europe, not the other part of the world. He basically, he was a Jewish scholar, and then later, Alice Baldwin, the Norwegian uh, scholar, the peace ac activist, he, she translated the book into the English. It's available in PDF, you can read the book. So after that, then, of course, future studies start to flourish in the Western world. And then, uh, of course, started in the run, uh, after that, uh, the US, under the run corporate, Herman Kahn, he, he was, uh, he came up with the methodology of Delphi study. You know, Delphi study, you know, collecting the idea of experts, and then later, you know, uh, they do it second, uh, first, second, and the third round until they confirm the idea, then based on that, they can predict the future. And he wrote one book, actually, the next 200 years, Herman Kahn. And then after that, he established a Hudson Institute for Future Studies. Then after that, the other Future Studies come up, you know, World Future Studies Federation, World Future, future Societies, and also Millennium Project. And you see the Western countries, if you look at many Western universities, uh, they have the Future Studies uh, academy, uh, institution and they offer uh, one week course, two week course, academic course, PhD, master program. Uh, so uh, basically started from them. When I look at the Islamic world, unfortunately, only lately we started to talk about this future and to have a kind of, you know, this study. When in 2008, when I was in UUM, that time I remember when uh, newly was appointed Prof. Mustafa Ishak as the, now he's the, our DG for, uh, I offered to him, I say, let have, a co uh, it was under the Colgis, College of Law, I told him let has, uh, let's have a course on future studies. So that time he said, okay, but later, you know, the proposal was not uh, accepted in 2008. Then later when I moved to UM again, I told them it was not. But after I come to here, I offer the proposal 
Prof Shukran, straight away he adopted the idea. He said, okay, let's have a unit first, and then inshallah, our aim is to have a center at the university level. But if you look at the Islamic world, there are some centers. They, they call it strategic planning center, and also in Iran they have, under the University of Imam Khomeini, the future studies, it is in the, at the College of Engineering, but it seems that one guy, he, was, he studied in US, he was influenced by these future studies, and then he went back to Iran, he established the center, after that the center dead, you know? There is no much activities. Uh, because this future study is a belief, is a journey. That's why we have to infect as much as people we can to these future studies so that you know, everybody talk about the future. We have to uh, teach our kids how to think about the future. Uh, it is not about only one workshop, two workshops, three workshops. We have to talk. And then this vision we have, 2007, if let's say by December we come up with a draft, doesn't mean that this is the end of the world. No, uh, the end of the project. No, we have to revisit our tools. We have to revisit our strategy. Okay, this is, doesn't work. Let's go back to this one. We have to have more workshop, more work. That's why it's very heavy. But of course, this is how we can create the future. This is how the Western world doing it. That's why they are the leader now. And in fact, the Prophet, when he came, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he spent 13 years in, Mad in Mecca, 10 years in Medina. He was doing the same thing. He's, within 23 years, he was able to establish the, the, what do you call, a very good civilization in the Arabian desert. This is how he was doing. He was always revisiting the strategy, the things, because it required a lot of thinking, a lot of work. And that's how, because Jannah, paradise is very expensive. Not everybody can enter. And I remember one scholar, he said that you cannot enter paradise unless you establish a paradise on earth. The paradise in the same paradise that we have in the heaven. Because there are many characteristics of that paradise. So we have to, you know, clean up our hearts. We have to be the true Muslim. This is the first way to establish paradise. The material things will come in later. Uh, okay. Uh, and you can see most of these organizations in the West even at the country level, national level, personal level, they are up actually now using these future studies as a tool to, to create the future that they want. But our role, if you look at it, if you look at the future studies, uh, those future studies fall under these categories. So some of them are actually predictive by nature. Uh, so they look at the emerging issues some of them, they look at the image of the future, they look at the age cohort. Like for example, they, they look at the young people, how they view the future, then based on that they can predict the future. Okay, this is the image of the future of the country. Now if you want to know how the militia look like in the 2050, you just make a survey among young people, how the young people think about militia. What is their worldview? What they are doing? Uh, and then uh, based on that, then you can predict. There are studies actually being done on that. Then based on that, you can say, oh, Malaysia, this is how it is going. Because those young people is going to rule by next 20 to 30 years from now. And then we have causal layer analysis. This is the Suhail Inayatullah's approach. This is more uh, uh, looking at the deep, deeper level. He wants, uh, what he called the methodology is, his problem is you have to question everything, even the worldview. That's, with, that's where we are in a disagreement. We have a vision, we don't question our vision. We don't question, for example, but according to him, you have to question. Because they, he believes that some certain system is there is for the benefit of some people. And they keep it and they try to justify it by religious texts, by bringing verses of the Quran. Okay, this is the, from the Quran, say like this, but it's actually it's a small circle are benefiting from the system. But actually, in somehow maybe it's true, in real, sometimes religion can be used you know, as to control the society, but 
uh, if you look at the, our practically, uh, of course, we are in disagreement with him here. And then scenario, scenario is, is more uh, participatory. Scenario building, creating backcasting, for example. This is some scholars like Jim Data, like Ellis Building, like uh, Richard Slaughter, and many others, you know. Uh, they come up with this scenario building. Inshallah, this scenario building, we are going to have it for the third workshop. But because it's very difficult now to, uh, of course, we will follow the same scenarios. But, and then we create a uh, wounded tiger, for example, and how, if let's say, uh, how we achieve this uh, wounded tiger, how we can achieve the passionate tiger, all these things. I remember when I attended a workshop in Vision in Malaysia in 2015, we did many scenarios, scenario building, that was conducted by Suhail himself. Even, in fact, we, someone was, uh, made as a prime minister that time. Because in the hall, you know, we could say anything we wanted to say. So someone became uh, like that of Siri Najib, he became the prime minister, and then someone was the head in the Petronas, and then after that, you know, there was, even I remember the aeroplane came and then hit the Twin Tower, and then this is the worst scenario we predicted, you know. And then, for surprisingly, Malaysian royal police was there. They were writing down every details. Because, you know, this is very good for them. Because they want to know how to prevent unlikely event in the future. Because this is a, a something we want to prevent. This scenario building will help you to prevent unlikely event. To prevent a own future. Uh, Jim Data, he is also one of the top futurist. Jim Data is actually, to me, he's more closer to us than the, our Muslim brothers, you know, uh, Suhail and uh, Zayuddin Sardar. Because to him, he bring the religion as well. He said that we should not dismiss the religion in our argument for future studies. But to him, he got four images. He said that if you look at the people around the world, Basically, they have this four view about the future. Some people, uh, 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 for image of the future, if you look at, for example, uh, events. This is the interaction and the things of uh, a combination of these four. So events, events happen whether we like it or not. Uh, Look at, for example, for 40 to 50 years, the whole world was locked by the Cold War. Trillions of dollars were spent. I'm not talking about the humans, how many humans were killed under the name of Cold War. And then, for no reason, we wake up one morning, and then they say, oh, the Cold War was over. And then now we have the end of history. And then Francis Fukuyama came, and then the end of history, and then the guy came, clouds of civilization. Anyway, there was an all-over argument. And then after that, one day we wake up, all of a sudden, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. And then within 45 days, he was kicked out of Kuwait, and then they imposed sanctions. 13 years, Iraqi people were suffering. Millions of kids died for no reason. This is events. Now. COVID-19 happens, of course there are reasons, but what I mean, events happened, is happening now, and will happen in the future. This is something, uh, part of our life. And then we have trends. Trends can be categorized into three. Trends, you know, later we will come back when we analyze the trends, how we can come up, how we can identify the trends. Trends sometimes related to the personal stories, personal experiences. Uh, the, you know, like sometimes they say, oh, uh, the failure is the experience you learn, you know. Uh, and then, you know, based on our experience, life experience, we learn, okay, this is how things work. Because we have already experienced. But some trends is not personal experience. We haven't. Uh, have any, I mean, enough experience. This is, experts can come in based on the data, 
telling us this is how the future will look like. There is a project, inshallah, I'm, uh, if let's say approved by the university, uh, there is one, uh, one of good friend of mine, uh, he tried to look at the demographic uh, population in Malaysia, how it is, how it will look like in 2050. In fact, actually, we did some work on, on that together. He already come up with the, based on the data. This is uh, something, uh, this is the expert can tell you, based on the mathematical statistics, will tell you, okay, this is how Malay Muslim will be look like. This is how many Malay, female, male, Chinese, this is how it is going. This is, experts can tell you. This is the trends. And the conclusion of that study later, you know, it was published in an article, but inshallah will be a book. Uh, uh, they say that Malaysian population will be aging. Aging, poor, don't have kids. So uh, this is the second level of train. The third one, we can call it emerging issues. Emerging issues, uh, this one I will come back inshallah to it later. Emerging issues, the problem is very provocative. Uh, it is not obvious. We don't see it, but sometimes there is a probability to, to attack us. Like the COVID-19, of course, some people t were telling us, oh, there is a virus will come, but we, were, we never expected that, okay, three months we stay at home, you know? Doing that. <laughs> it, 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 I never imagined something will happen like that, you know? And then, uh, so those things, you know, only also the futurists who are very expert. In Arabic, we call them Mukhazram. Mukhazram in this, you know, deep knowledge of the history, the philosophy, all these sciences, they are able to tell you this is some emerging issues, we have to be aware of it. Because, and then he's scared to tell you. Because if he mentioned, people will send him to mental hospital. And, and it happens, you know, it happens. There are many people, you know, when uh, Galilo, he said that, oh, the sun is, uh, the earth is uh, uh, moving, you know. Then they, 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 he was about to be killed anyway, okay. Uh, and then uh, image and actions. Here is also important. Image and actions influencing our future. Now we have our own image, Islamic image, Islamic worldview. If let's say we act upon it, we practice our religion truly, the actions part also is important. These two things, will, we, can, we are able to predict the future that we want. And I remember, uh, I was sitting with uh, Imran Hussein, the scholar. He talks about a lot about the future. He said that, Wahid, if you truly are a Muslim, you don't have a sin, you can ask Allah anything you want. And then he will do it for you. With that belief, he said that, I challenge many kuffar, come. This is the truth about my religion. I make a dua, you also make a dua to your, to your sanam, to your, then see which one is true. My dua will be accepted by Allah. But he say, they don't, they don't want to accept the challenge. He say, they, yeah, he say with that one, but make sure you don't have a sin, he told me. He say sin in a broader sense, don't lie, don't cheat. Don't have ghadr in your heart. Don't do this one. It, uh, uh, sins is not only about zina or stealing, virtue, all these kind of things. No, as a broader sense. Be punctual. All this one, if you are like that, you ask Allah, Allah will do it for you. So with that sense, of course, uh, this is. Uh, so uh, we should have alternative. And then again, you know, with Gem Data, he highlighted these uh, four things, you know, the growth. This is the growth started at the age industrial revolution. 
you know, when the agriculture was abandoned and then the urbanization started, the city things, and then people moved, and then they bring them into the factories, all these things at the name of growth and development. And then they started to explore the resources, the natural resources, and then uh, for that, they exploit other nations, colonization started, all these things at the name of growth. And then later, of course, some people cry. They say, wait a minute. Growth is not only about material things. We are heading towards collapse. And then actually, if you look at all of us, we have this type of views, you know, collapse. We are heading towards collapse if we are not be careful. If you are not reversing and then bringing about another dimension for development, human happiness, for example, and the other things. And then some people, of course, they say, okay, in order to stop collapse, let's have a discipline. Discipline ourselves voluntarily. That's why, you know, like UIA, we don't use the, this anymore, this mineral water. It's a kind of discipline. But whether this discipline will work or not, this is something else. Because we are not the one who pollute the environment. Big giant companies, factories are the ones who pollute in the environment. Those people are still polluting the environment. But we are here, you know. Of course, it doesn't mean, you know, I'm not uh, against this one. We should do that, you know. At the personal level, everybody should feel kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati. But also we have to look at in a broader picture. And then transformation. Some people say that, oh, technology is going to reverse all this collapse, and then we can solve our uh, environment problem. Technology is, uh, you know, like we can have uh, the chips inserted in your body, preventing any kind of sickness, we are going to live for 1,000 years. And in fact, if you look at Quran, Quran mentioning this one, Allah says, Kufar, they, want, they try to live 1,000 years. So what, even if they make 1,000 years, still they are going to die. Quran they didn't deny that uh, this kind of achievement. They can live for like this guy Yuval Noah Harari in Homo Deus. He said that 1,000 years human being is going to live in 2,100, 2,100 people can live for 1,000 years. And Quran mentioned this one actually. Not just we should not as a Muslim we should not just observe. We have to change. Uh, you see the Sweden, they have created the Ministry of Future. Actually, they do the same exercise now we are doing. They are revisiting their strategy, they are revisiting their plan, they are uh, doing many kind of... That's why in Sweden, if you compare Sweden to Malaysia, look at, look at Malaysia and Sweden. Which one is n more richer than... Uh, Malaysia, of course, richer in terms of many things, in terms of humans, in terms of natural resources, in terms of everything. But economically, the problem is, you see, how they are ahead of us. Which one is more richer, Iraq or Sweden? Iraq, of course, thousand times is better than, uh, richer than the Sweden. In Iraq, we just dig a little bit, the oil will come out. <laughs> yes, it happens, you know. Sometimes the, the oil is actually mixed with water, you know, the water. We open the pipe, oh, it smell of oil, you know. And then, you see, the Iraq, since the MCO started in my region, they don't pay the civil servant salary. They say, oh, we have no money. And the Sweden, now, if you, uh, your father, your, your, what do you call, you are serving your father, they make it like a job, okay. Uh, just reminding your father or oh, take the medication, diabetic medication, the government give you the money. Just, just because, as Prof mentioned just now, the uh, German Chancellor is behaving that way, that's why they are ahead of us. So we have to transfer, you know. Uh, UAE, they created this one, but I don't know how I haven't followed this one, the future of happiness. So basically, the future of happiness of the, their national. The other people are not happy, of course. The, yeah. 
And then, this is, uh, I, I, this quote I got it from the 21st century, a uh, lesson for, uh, for the 21st century book written by Yuval Noah Harari. He's a Jewish scholar, atheist. He don't believe in anything. And by the way, he is a gay. I just found out because I bought this book, I didn't know, you know, and when I read, he say, dedicated to my husband. I say, what? <laughs> so, uh, so, but anyway, al-hikmatu dalatul mu'min anna wajadaha fawa haqub. Yeah, I'm not uh, looking at this part. He said that if future of humanity is decided in your absence because you are too busy feeding and closing your kids, you and they will not be exempt from the consequences this is very unfair, but who said history is fair? And, and then he said that, later don't come and complain why this is the case, why my country been colonized, why is like that? Because you are not there, you are talking about, oh, I don't have time, I have many things to do. So that's why we have to bring this future thinking into our part of our activity, daily activity actually. This is from Suhail. He said our future is an asset, resource, and a narrative to be employed. It is a system of belief. And I agree with him. You have to actually talk about future and bring the element of akhirah. Our things we do for akhirah, of course. Before I came here today, I told Dr. Iyad, he came to my office, he said, let's go to the workshop. I say, have you made a year now? He said, yeah, yeah, already. That, of course, I make my niya. Oh Allah, I am going to that workshop for you. I want the reward not here. I want when I enter the grave. Yeah, I, I, I say like that. Uh, okay. Uh, when we look at the future, when we look at the things, we have to look at from this, the things, you know, look at the elephant as a whole. I believe that we are here. We already had a plan, very nice things. But the next, I'm afraid we are, you know, uh, there is no, I don't know whether there is stairs to go, I don't know. Uh, this is uh, my future thinking, you know, I tell this story in many workshops. Started when I was, uh, in 1992, I was 13 years old. I was in a refugee camp. And that time I was orphan, of course. And then many international organizations came in, you know, helping the orphan people, you know, like. And then I remember Rabbit al-Alam al-Islami came to me and they say, oh, they came to my mother, they say, how many orphan you have? Uh, my mother say, we have four. They say, we can sponsor two. And then me and my brother was selected as a sponsor. And then they say, okay, you have to attend the Usra also. So for two years, I was in the uh, refugee camp. And then the guy, the Ustaz, he was a very nice man. I still remember his name, his name was Ustaz Zuhair. The first Ustaz, he said, do you know Arabic? I say, I don't know Arabic. He said, okay, this book you try to read and understand. If you don't understand, you just come to me, I will explain to you. Of course, I took the book and I didn't understand. I went back to him and then after that, chapter by chapter, he explained to me. That book was written by Sayyid Qutb, The Future of Islam. And then after that, of course, he gave me another book, Mada Khasir Al-Alam Bin Hitat Al-Muslimin. These two books actually influenced my future thinking, you know. And I advise you, you know, if you haven't read that book, please read them. It will, you know, give you a confidence about our religion. He really said Qutb. And then since then, of course, I bought the Fizilal Al-Quran. Anywhere I go, this Fizal al-Quran is with me. In 2013, my copy, the one who was with me, was with me at the, uh, coming back to Malaysia. The guy told me what the book is that, you know, at the international airport, Erbil International Air Airport. You see how the Muslim world become. The guy came and then checked, oh, this Fizila, this is the terrorist book. Okay, sorry, I take that book, uh, we don't allow you to take I say, I'm going to Malaysia, not, this book is, is, no, no, sorry. Anyway, when I arrived back here, I bought another copy because there are many, yeah. And actually, I have many books written by Westerners, including the Henry Kessinger. 
you go and read his book, The Wall Order, for example, Steven Pinker, for example, all the Jerry Diamond, all of them, without exception, in several locations in their book, they mention in Sayyid Qutb. They is look like Sayyid Qutb, even he is dead, you know, still they are afraid of him, afraid of his idea. And after that, of course, when I arrived in Malaysia, I started, you know, looking at the future thinking, and then I found many books, is actually the Western countries, you know, the Westerners wrote, like for example, Herbert uh, George Wells, Anticipation. Basically, uh, this uh, guy, uh, he is uh, considered as a science fiction novelist. He was writing about the, what's going to happen in the year 2000. But actually, most of these predictions came through. Because he talks about the transportation, the aerospace, for example. The, the, and then we have uh, Alvin Toffler. Alvin Toffler is he's the top futurist also. The future shock. He said that he talked about the recycling, for example. The, he said that in to, the year 2000, you don't repair the machine. Because repairing it will, is more expensive than buying a new product. And uh, Makio Kako. Uh, Makio Kako, his problem is this book, The Vision, was written, uh, what do you call, uh, he basically talking about science. And then he don't, be, uh, he don't talk about the society, he don't, because he said that science is controlling the society, politics, everything in the future. Physics, basically. To him, is physics. The God, to him, is physics. And actually, I wrote a review. I will send to publication, inshallah, soon. I criticize him. The, what, the, the, what do you call? The future is not only about science. We are, we are the one who create the science, not uh, fi uh, other way around. And then, these are the bunch of books, you know. Looking backward, this is uh, talking about for example, uh, uh, sleeping and then waking up in 2000, or you find the world that you want. And then uh, future files is very important for us by looking at the trends. This guy is actually Richard Watson. He got a website, Trend Analysis. So in this exercise, inshallah, we need him. We can consult his website and book to look at what are the trends actually he highlighted. He highlighted very good uh, the year 2000. How are the trends developing, actually? Uh, uh, Richard Watson, the future file. The future file. And also, uh, of course, gem data, a notice in time. And then uh, the next 200 years was Herman Khan. And then questioning the future, Suhail Inayatullah. The next 100 years, this next 100 years, this is the, the written by uh, George Friedman. Uh, the director and the CEO of uh, Stratfor. Basically, they call him the second CIA. Because this guy, I was actually, I subscribe their uh, narrative and also their reporting every week. You know, if you pay to them, uh, 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 is a 200 US dollar, weekly they send you a report. And I remember before the assassination of Banatir Boto, one month earlier, they sent a report. They say there is assassination attempt against Banatir Boto. The report says that. When I read, and it's actually one month later, he was, she was assassinated. So they uh, basically, you know, based on the, their agents on the ground, so they can tell you all. And in fact, now he wrote, now these next 100 years, he make it like, okay, next decades, what's going to happen, next decades. So by the year 2040, there is a World War III. And that, surprisingly, this World War III between US, Turkey, and Japan. The Japanese army allied with the Turkish army. Together, they will attack the US. And the day that chosen is a Thanksgiving day, because the US leaders, most of them are in holiday. So it takes time for them to gather and to analyze what has happened, actually. By that time, it is too late, and then the Turkish army, the Japanese army will attack second time and then will be second strike capability. 
So he mentioned about this war. This is a scenario, of course. This is forecasting. Uh, so these are some emerging issues. You know, we as a Muslim, you should take it into, you know, looking at very carefully. This guy, he claims that, okay, they have created artificial meat. I uh, know we have to analyze how it will affect us as a Muslim. I'm afraid, you know, later if let's say internationally they, they make it uh, cheaply available, okay, now no more zabah, no more slaughtering during our hajj, no more this one. So how are you going to, because they are the one who created the future. We are not there. And then we, we cannot, we just accept. There will be some imams will come and then they will give some fatwa, okay, it's okay. Just like today, they normalize the relationship with Israel, okay, they bring some imams, okay, it's okay now under the name of peace. And then you see the right of the robot. This is happening. The woman is marrying the, what do you call, a dogs, a, the robots, a ro and then they give the wealth to the dog. I mean, this kind of thing is happening is actually. And then the 3D, we have a smart kitchen, can cook anything for you. In the next 10 years, we are going to have it. Can cook sour champur. You just put the ingredients and oh, I want sour champur, I want pizza, I want this one. It is happening. It's actually, those things is created. So the question is, where are our Muslims actually? Unfortunately, we are not there. That's the, that's the, so, this is, you see this uh, Korean lady, she lost the, the daughter in 2016, and then she was able to meet her, with her uh, again, a uh, visual reality. And then I saw the video, the girl says, I miss you mother, where have you been? Where? You know, they talk, and then they, you know, I couldn't hold my tears of course, but because I have a daughter. Uh, but you know, this is the reality. Now they are able to bring back, you know, like in a visual reality, you give them some pictures of the, of the deceased and the, what do you call, the voices, and then they are able, you are able to talk to your deceased person. You know, in 19, in 19 you, just, you just, you can Google. Uh, why I mentioned, inshallah, of course, there are many emerging issues. Later, you have to, each class have to do this, uh, find out. I'm just, you know, like a kind of refreshing those things. In 1980, if you look at it, if you look at any interview on TV, you can see both of them are smoking on TV, right? That time, smoking was not, uh, there is no established or well medical study saying that, okay, there is a link between smoking and that time was okay. And then all of a sudden now, anyone want to smoke, they have to go to the toilet, not the, on TV, right? And in fact, become very uncivilized. And I'm very sure one day, one day, one day, Coca-Cola, all these soft drinks will be the same thing. The, uh, if you want to drink those soft drinks, you have to go to the toilet. You have to go there. But now, why we should not act now? Why we have soft drinks in the campus, for example? Why we should not stop them? This is, the, we want a better future, right? We want a healthy Muslims. So that's why this is the emerging issues. You go to any supermarket, it tells you, oh, this is 100% grape juice, 100% orange juice. This is true. This is true, I mean, what we, we, but we never question, you know, we never question, we just take the things as it is without questioning. So these future studies are actually enabling you to question the things. That's why the other day when I went to supermarket, Jai Grocer, there is a juice, 100% grape juice. And then when I look at it, it's, it's made in Silangor. I told the guy, can you please, uh, uh, this is I show hundred percent grape juice. Say, yeah, yes, yes, yes. I say, where is grape farm here in Malaysia? We have, but Malaysian weather is not suitable for grape farm. So why we have to have this kind of lie? Just because of the same, but in the name of growth, some people want to fill up their pocket. We have to stop this one. You know, uh, we have to be the role model 
uh, for other country. And this is Boy Alive also, they claims that they already cloned the horse, the donkeys, now they are ready to clone the human being and uh, they are waiting. I don't know whether they started to clone the human being or not. We have many movies on that. And then this is published in, in Economy, Economist. Uh, they talk about uh, those things. And then, of course, other than that, we have this one also. Previously in Malaysia, in the Uttara, every five years we used to have the flood. But now every year, you know, people are afraid. One or two days the rain continue. Oh, last, last year I wanted to go to Kelantan to visit some of my friends. December was the ideal time for me to visit. They told me, don't go, because this is the time for flood. You will stuck there. But previously was not the case. Now it's happening. This is the, I'm afraid, you know, one day we wake up, there is a snow in Malaysia. In fact, it actually, I dream of that. You know, one day, I, one night in my dream, you know, I wake up, snow everywhere. I say, oh, alhamdulillah, there is a snow, you know. <laughs> but, but actually, reality will happen. And this is the sign of the Yawm al-Qiyamah. The Prophet says that the Jazeera al-Arabiya will be greenery, will be cold, the weather, you know, like the weather change. And uh, the population, the population, some people say that population is growing. You know, uh, Thomas Malchus, all other people, and then they start under the name of, they have created a lot of wars. But in fact, you actually, you look at it, population is decreasing, is not, in, uh, is decreasing, is not increasing. Why? Because the trends now, the young people, they don't marry. Even if they marry, they marry late. And then if they marry, Late, they don't go for kids. If they go for kids, they only go for one or two. It's not like our fathers. They go for 10, 20. It's not like our prime ministers. You know how many brothers and sisters he has. <laughs> uh, uh, but now, so this is uh, actually tells you a lot. So that's why the population is actually decreasing rather than, you know, why some people, uh, uh, despite all the argument, they say that, you know, the European, for example, they open the door to the migrants, the refugees, the Syrians, for example. It's actually, sometimes there is economical part here. Some towns, my sister was telling me, the town that she was staying, she was having a difficulty, uh, what do you call, for kids' education. She has to send the kids to an, the next town, you know, every day. Because there is no kids in the town. All are old people, and they're about to die. But now when you go to Germany, a lot of economic activities, now the Syrians, you can see the Syrian shawarma in, you go to Hamburg, there is one side, it's just like you are in a Muslim country. You can find macham macham. You can find masjid, Turkish masjid, Pakistani masjid. You can find anything you want. You can find kebab, shawarma. You can find, you know, uh, the uh, shop for Malay foods. I went there. I bought the, you know, the what do you call, sambal belacan. Yeah, I yeah I bought sambal belacan. In 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 Hamburg, there is a shop. Uh, my brother, my brother-in-law me and then I went there, we bought the things and then uh, I said let me cook for you some Malaysian food because they want to how Malaysian food look like, you know. How, how. So I cooked Tom Yam, you know those things, you know, th that's why Daniel Pipe, Daniel Pipe, he is, uh, what do you call, he is a very, how to describe him, I don't know how he is. He came to Malaysia, that time when I was in ISS, he visited Malaysia. And then he came and then he say, uh, we, I, I had a discussion with him. He say, Wahid, do you know that next 10 years, Europe will be peacefully occupied by the Muslims? I say, so what is wrong with that? His main major worry is about that. Muslim will be uh, controlling Europe because Europeans are getting old and they are, they are disappearing. And then Muslims going there by, by thousands, by millions, you know, then what will happen? And then all these Muslims, when they go, 
they have more kids, 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 and then no matter what, the moment you are injected with Islam and prayer, even if you don't pray, one day, inshallah, you will start praying, you know. This Islamic identity still will be with you. Because I have seen many people, you know, they say they're not good Muslims, you know, they say, one day before I die, I will be a good Muslim. Everybody have this kind of, yeah. This is the study we did it in for Malaysia, uh, Malaysian population in 2050, yeah. And that was in the media, they say, uh, that statement was by Muhammad Khalid, uh, the author of The Color of Inequality. He said that Malaysia, all poor, sick, and without children by 2050. So these are some trends here with regard to our nation. Okay, I skip all these things. Okay, now, uh, now I'm in the, this foundational concept. When we think about the future, there are some foundational concepts is very important. It's very important to, to be aware of it. One of them is the used future. We have to ask ourselves when we create a future, is it we are borrowing the future from other people? Like for example, we want to bring the development, is it based on the Western kind of uh, model of future or not? And unfortunately, when we look at our Muslim countries, we are still trapped with this kind of youth future. We try to become, you know, that's why we have more building, more highways, more malls, more, 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 more. And then in the end, what happens? Uh, all of us, we will live in, in a mall. And in fact, actually now is happening. That's why now every condominium, the power of the condominium, there is a mall. So that, you know, when you come down, there is a mall, and then when you go back, and then and I'm afraid, you know, after that, they, they establish a bridge between the malls. But this is not the development that we wanted, is actually. If you look at the Western countries, they already, they know that this is, uh, that was wrong, and that's why, oh, that's why they have the, this side. Now they are, when they build a road, this is how they think. The, I saw, you know, by my own eyes, this guy, what is his name? The, the Prime Minister of uh, Austria. He was cycling. He was cycling. You can go and see him in Amsterdam. He is cycling. He go to the, every morning he go to the coffee shop, he have a coffee and then he go to his office, cycling. In Iraq, when the prime minister go out, 1,000 car in ahead of him, 1,000 car behind him. Because you know, he's a zalim. He know that if he go alone, he will be killed. People don't let him to go like that peacefully. It is not, our metaphor would be like Omar bin al-Khattab. He was sleeping under the tree. The delegation came from the Rome and they say, we want to see the Khalifa of Islam, Muslimin. And then Omar bin al-Khattab was wearing a very, normal clothes, and he said, yes, I am a Khalifa, what do you want? He said, are you crazy? Say, yeah, he said, yeah, I am Khalifa. And then the record says that some of them become a Muslim as a result of that. They were expecting he was living in a castle, you know. And that was Umar bin al-Khattab is actually. We want this kind of things to bring it back. And uh, sometimes, you know, we work for the future very hard, for the material things. We, you know, the future I just mentioned, and in the end, this is not what we wanted. At the personal level, we try very hard to become the CEO, to become this one, to become this one, to become this one, and then in the end, we realized that it was at the expense of many things. At the expense of the family, at the expense of health, at the expense of many things. You can go and interview all rich people in Kuala Lumpur. Most of them, they don't sleep in their houses because they have a problem with their wife, with their kids. They prefer to sleep in the hotels. Yeah, I have a friend working was in Saim Derby. He told me, Wahid, all these houses in Bukit Julutong, you know, most of the rich people are living there. He said that, you know, they have a family problem. They are my friend, I know. You can go and ask them, where is your husband? They say, oh, he's in a hotel. 
and then even the wife don't know which hotel is that. They prefer to sleep in the hotel because, uh, because this is his own, this own future. This is uh, actually not uh, the future they wanted. And that's why if you go to any park, you can see many old people, they start to jogging. You know? Because, you know, later in life they realize, oh, it was at the expense of their health. And then their kids doesn't listen to them. And same goes to the organization. Sometimes the organization, we have been forced of many things. Uh, like the university, just like David Price he mentioned, I, re I remember when he was invited by EPF, he said that the university nowadays are very obsessed with ranking. Okay, publish, publish, scopus, 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 scopus. In the end, what happens? Nobody uh, read those articles. Nobody read Scopus article. He say, I challenge, I, I, what do you call, I challenge you even one single, even the reviewer doesn't read your article. As long as you pay the money to them, to publication. He say they don't read, they don't have the time. Who has the time to read 10 pages of your article? He say, me, myself, if they make me a review, I don't read your article. Let alone, you know, and then what happens? Uh, we have all these things, okay, we have, we are the 10 like this, we are, in the end what happens? This is not what we wanted. And then he mentioned, if these things continue, next to 10 years, goodbye to Malaysian universities. And uh, I remember uh, Tansri Ghaus was there, the former vice chancellor of UM, he said that, Alhamdulillah, that's why I left UM. Now I am in a safe hand in, Sunway University, because it is sponsored by Jeffrey Chair, they have a money. At least, you know, until my death, I have, you know, a proper job, you know. So, but that's the reality. Because, you know, we haven't think about other things, you know, we just think about, uh, in the end, what is the, I remember, you know, all lecturers in UM when I was in UM are very busy with uh, ranking, please put my name, I put your name. I, I say, what, this is, this is not the real knowledge. We are the Muslim. We should, okay, we should publish the work that I push, I should put, I should put my name, the work that I did something. Not, uh, I, what do you call, I write an article, you ask me, to, okay, uh, let me put, yeah, there are many invitations coming to me. Uh, Dr. Wahid, I put your name, can I put my name in your article? I say, no, I don't do that. I don't do that. And then alternative future. Do you have alternative future or not? Do you have the, what do you call, uh, what happens? You know, this has happened in Iraq, for example. We only had one future. For how many years we were living under Saddam, the former president. And then when Saddam was removed, and then we have no alternative. People don't know where to go. Some people say that, oh, let's go back to the Saddam's era. Some people say that, let's go to democracy. Some people say that, okay, let's mix together. Nobody knows. People are confused whether, what is democracy, what is, so we have no alternative because we haven't trained ourselves to have, at the personal level as well, have you have, uh, do you have alternative or not? And then, ah, this is very important. This is very important, the alignment. Sometimes, you know, Prof, uh, we have a mission, uh, a vision. We have a very beautiful vision just now, Prof explained. We have already. The question is, organizationally, personally, and everyone, are, uh, are we in the same line? In a, in a alignment and also outer alignment. In a alignment, do we believe really in our heart we can achieve that future or not? And also our activity, our daily activities. Did we clean our heart, for example? Did we make our knee, for example? The, sometimes, you know, the organization have a very beautiful vision, but what happens, their daily activities is actually leading them to work somewhere else. So the, the, vision, the vision is there. The, the vision is there just for sure, to tell the world that, okay, we have a vision because everybody have a vision. 
and then it will lead you towards something else, actually. That's why in organization, you have to make sure everything, every unit, every institution, every people have the same kind of alignment. In the West, they have already created this kind of alignment. No matter who is in power, the system will force you to follow this vision and follow this future that they want. And then model of social change, of course, do you believe that we can change something? Or you believe that, okay, we, uh, we just leave it to Qadar, predestination. And this is some people believe in that. Some people say that, okay, just wait. Uh, I remember, you know, when I was in Sha'alam, one night, a group of people knocked my door. And then they were, uh, you know, it seems that they are from Tabligh, Jama'at Tabligh. So they knocked my door, they say, uh, say, oh, sorry, sorry, are you Muslim or non-Muslim? I say, I'm Muslim, alhamdulillah. And then they say, uh, we are from this mosque, we just dropped by, and then we are sitting here for a while. Actually, we want you to think about Akhira. We want you to come with us for a few days to, you know, to make da'wah. And, uh, and then we, we can, you know. Then I told them, I am teaching, also I'm doing da'wah. They say, no, no, this is all the affair. This is all the affair. Uh, we need you to, you know, get away from worldly affair. We want you to uh, akhira. I say this is you got the things wrong. Yeah, I told them this is you got the thing wrong. I'm doing, a, a, I'm doing da'wah. I'm doing, I'm going to the university. I don't have a time to come three days with you. And also, you have to wear some certain clothes. To me, this is not the, uh, well, all due respect to this one, this is not the way Islam work. Then I told them, then there was, of course, they came to my house and then we sit together and then we had a good argument. But what I mean, actually, we should not, you know, Islam is actually broader things, you know, it's a practical religion. Uh, everything is fall under it. Everything is ibadah. And that's what uh, Al-Qardawi says, uh, what do you call, al uh, Model of social change, okay. Uh, the use of future. Do you believe that these tools of future studies can help us to create the future that we want? This is a very important question. And of course, I believe, personally, I believe that we can do it. We can do it. Despite all the pessimistic view uh, out there, we should not be pessimistic, we should be optimistic because Allah is with us. Anything you want personally, ask Allah, Allah will do it for you. Anything organizationally we want, as long as we are sincere, Allah will be... Come on, Allah is the one who created us. Kun fayakun. Okay. I am done until here. This is basically summarizing the future studies. And of course, throughout the workshop today, and also the next workshop, inshallah, somewhere in October and also in November, we will be learning more about these future studies. For the time being, this is just uh, as in Malay, they say chukup, uh, because it will be, it's getting boring, you know? So let's have some kind of uh, just, 10 minutes, uh, you know, like a, a kind of uh, having kind of uh, refreshment, and then after that we will start the real workshop, inshallah. Zakum Allah khairah.